Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're focusing on the global impact of sugar sweetened beverages. Recent studies suggest that sugary drinks contribute to hundreds of thousands of deaths every year along with millions of new cases of chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes and heart disease. I'll be guiding our conversation, and with me is Alara Skye. She'll offer additional insights into why sugary drinks have become such a significant health concern. Thanks, Ethan. One of the most striking findings comes from research published in Nature Medicine, which links sugar-sweetened beverages, or SSBs, to more than 330,000 deaths worldwide annually. The study looked at consumption patterns in 184 countries over a 30-year span and found that SSBs were responsible for 2.2 million new type 2 diabetes cases in 2020 alone, about 1 in 10 new cases globally. That number is staggering. It's not just about type 2 diabetes either. According to the same research, sugary drinks accounted for 1.2 million new cases of cardiovascular disease in 2020 which is around 1 in 30 heart-related illnesses that year. When you think about how easily accessible sodas, energy drinks, and fruit punches are, it's clear that these beverages play a major role in declining health worldwide. Exactly. In total, sugary drinks were linked to 338,240 deaths in 2020, split between type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease fatalities. Beyond those grim numbers, there's also a concept called Disability Adjusted Life Years, or DALYs. Researchers found SSBs cost the world 12.5 million healthy years of life in 2020. That figure represents not just premature death, but also the years people live with chronic, debilitating health problems. It's definitely a global phenomenon, but some regions are more severely impacted than others. Latin America, the Caribbean, and Sub-Saharan Africa have some of the highest rates of sugary drink-related health problems. In Colombia, for instance, nearly half of all new type 2 diabetes cases, 48.1%, were linked to SSBs in 2020, along with 23% of their cardiovascular disease cases. That's almost half of new diabetes diagnoses from one dietary habit. Yes, and Mexico isn't far behind with 30% of its new type 2 diabetes cases tied to sugary drinks. In Sub-Saharan Africa, Nearly 22% of new diabetes cases stem from this same issue. Part of the reason is that, in many regions, soda is marketed aggressively and often more readily available than clean water. When people don't have reliable access to safe drinking water, they may default to purchasing cheap, sugar-laden beverages. It's also worth mentioning that younger people are heavily affected. Adults between 25 and 29 have the highest consumption rates, which translates to about 15.6% of their type 2 diabetes cases being linked to SSBs. Men tend to have a slightly higher risk than women, at least based on who's more likely to consume multiple sugary beverages a day. Marketing tactics often target young adults, and that can create a lifelong habit if they're not aware of the health consequences. Lifestyle factors, urban living, and education levels also play roles. In some areas, especially in Africa and Latin America, People with more education and higher incomes may spend disposable cash on these drinks, assuming they're simply convenient treats. Meanwhile, heavy marketing in cities further normalizes the idea of drinking soda or fruit punches with meals. So, it's not just personal choice in isolation. The environment and the availability of these products contribute significantly. Let's turn to how this has changed over time. Between 1990 and 2020, the global burden of type 2 diabetes cases tied to sugary drinks rose by about 1.3%. That's not a huge spike, but it does indicate that the issue hasn't improved. In sub-Saharan Africa, though, the increase is much more dramatic. This region saw an 8.8% jump in diabetes and a 4.4% jump in cardiovascular disease linked to sugary drinks during the same period. That regional variation shows how important targeted interventions can be. Some countries, like Mexico, have introduced policies such as soda taxes to curb consumption. These taxes aim to make sugary drinks more expensive, 
encouraging people to think twice before purchasing them. Evidence suggests that these types of measures can help slow the rise in health problems by nudging consumers toward healthier choices. But the data also underscores the need for ongoing strategies, especially in places without such policies. Of course, individual responsibility plays a major part too. One of the critical distinctions is between natural sugar and added sugar. Natural sugar, the kind you get from whole fruits, comes packaged with fiber and nutrients. When you eat an orange, for example, you're getting sugar along with vitamins and fiber, that slow absorption. In contrast, added sugars, like those in sodas, energy drinks, and sweetened teas, flood your system with glucose or fructose without any accompanying nutrients or satiation signals. High fructose corn syrup, or HFCS, is a common sweetener in many sodas. It's particularly problematic because the fructose component bypasses normal pathways for sugar metabolism and is handled primarily by the liver. This process can lead to increased fat storage and does nothing to help you feel full, making it easy to overconsume. Regularly spiking your body with these added sugars can push you toward obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. When you look at how to reduce your intake of sugary beverages, small substitutions can make a difference. Instead of a sugary soda, switching to sparkling water with a splash of juice can dramatically lower your overall sugar load. Or, if you find yourself reaching for energy drinks, consider herbal teas or plain water with fruit slices. Over time, these small choices add up, especially if you're someone who tends to reach for multiple sweetened drinks a day. Reading labels is another key step. A lot of people believe fruit juices or flavored teas are healthy, only to discover that many brands are loaded with added sugars. By checking the nutrition facts, you'll often see high sugar content in products marketed as better for you alternatives. Also, planning ahead is crucial. Keep a refillable water bottle on hand so you're not tempted by vending machine soda or convenience store energy drinks when you're thirsty. Governments and health organizations suggest additional measures like implementing warning labels on sugary drinks or reducing their advertising, particularly toward children. Some regions make clean water more accessible in schools and public places, cutting down the need to rely on vending machines. But on a day-to-day -day level, building awareness is key. Once people know how much sugar they're consuming and the long-term risks, it's easier to cut back. Let's quickly address some frequently asked questions. First, what exactly qualifies as a sugar-sweetened beverage? These are drinks with added sugar, like soda, fruit punches, and energy drinks. They're not 100% fruit juices, and they're not water or unsweetened tea. Second, how do sugary drinks affect your health? They overload your body with refined sugars, leading to weight gain, insulin resistance, and higher risk for diseases such as type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular issues. Those are essential points. Another question might be, which areas are most at risk? Based on the data, Latin America, the Caribbean, and Sub-Saharan Africa have the highest proportion of new disease cases traced back to sugary drinks. And yes, young adults are more vulnerable than many realize partly because they consume more of these beverages while also living in areas where aggressive marketing is common. Finally, the difference between natural and added sugar is critical. Natural sugars found in whole fruits come with beneficial fiber and nutrients, reducing the harmful impact on blood glucose. Added sugars like those found in sugary drinks offer zero nutritional value and spike your blood sugar rapidly. Ultimately, it's these added sugars that pose a serious threat to metabolic health. Thank you for that thorough explanation, Alara. We've covered a lot of information, the magnitude of the global problem, the specific regions most affected, the difference between natural and added sugar, and practical steps for reducing sugary beverage consumption. We want to remind everyone that small changes, like opting for water, reading labels, and limiting sweetened drink purchases, can have a big impact over time. That's right. Whether it's from personal choice or broader policy measures like soda taxes, the end goal is to reduce the enormous burden these drinks place on public health. Avoiding sugar-sweetened beverages is one of the most straightforward ways to lower your risk of type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. It's a change that can quite literally save lives, especially in communities bearing the brunt of these health impacts. And with that, we'll wrap up this episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and I've been joined by Alara Skye. Thank you for tuning in.
We hope the insights shared today motivate you to look more closely at what's in your cup and to make informed choices for better health. Until next time, stay aware and stay well. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.